so when we were talking a couple of days ago, you were like, nobody knows about the NSSEC. How, I can't believe it. <laughs> so, so for our viewers who might not know, what is DNSSEC and, and its importance to, to kind of the, maybe the survival, if you will, of the uh, Internet? Well, so this is what's very interesting. Um, I, and I have to be fully honest here, I was not a DNSSEC supporter at all. I, I was like, no, they, this is the technology. We've been working on it for a decade. The engineering has been a train wreck, blah, blah, blah. I mean, I'm saying these bad things because I need the audience to understand there's, like, this has been a 180. Like, me being a DNSSEC supporter, and here's what happened. So we find this bug, right? And I get a summit at Microsoft, and we've got all these people there, and uh, a fair number of them have been pushing DNSSEC for a decade as the canonical fix for this class of problems. Mm -hmm. I say to them, guys, I like all of you. You know I believe in all of you. You've been trying to do this for 10 years. We're not going to do it in the next six months. <laughs> Dan Bernstein came up with the right fix for now, for what we need to do. Let's do his fix. But if you do it, I promise, I will give DNSSEC a fair and honest evaluation. I will really think about it and really work on it. But please, let's do what Dan Bernstein said. Mm -hmm. And people said, okay, we'll do this approach. It's the right approach engineering-wise. We will be able to deliver Dan Bernstein's solution. And DNSSEC will look at it after. So, we put in Dan Bernstein's fix, and that's been a great stopgap. It's been a great band-aid, but nobody thinks it's a complete fix. Sure. At the end of the day, we made my attack 65,000 times harder. That's nice, but you know, now it's you know, 650,000 seconds. And, and his solution specifically was to address specifically what you had found. His solution was a... The great thing about beautiful design fixes is they address bugs that you don't even know. Mm. It's, you know what, I'm looking at this and this piece right here, it's wrong. And I'm pretty sure something bad is going to happen. Dan Bernstein didn't know about my personal attack, which was TTL bypass through alternate names. The details don't matter, it's an old bug. But Dan Bernstein's solution, which was to eliminate the entire class of potentially malicious replies by increasing the entropy from 1 out of 65,000 to 1 out of a couple billion, this was great engineering and his advice should have been followed. And there was this, you know, everyone gasping moment at the summit when Paul Vixie just said, ah, we should have done what Dan Bernstein said 10 years ago. <laughs> so everyone's like, man, if Paul's going to say it, okay, let's just do it. But the summit gets out, we get the patch out, we deal with it all, and I start looking at DNS. And I realize a couple things. First off, it is actually it does actually utterly address my bug. Oh. You know, forget one out of sixty-five that you know, one out of a couple billion. Uh, the work effort of breaking the cryptography is sufficiently high. It is a much more solid, much more canonical fix. Right. This is wonderful. But perhaps overkill. All DNSSEC did was fix up addresses. Now maybe there'd be easier ways. I'm just saying it's true. But then I started looking at the state of security in general. And let me tell you, I can send an email to Yahoo. I can send an email to Microsoft. I can send an email to Google. But I can't encrypt an email to any of these companies. Why is that? Why is it so much easier for me to get connectivity cross-organizationally than it is for me to get authentication and confidentiality cross-organization? And the answer is because DNS gives me where to go, but not how to recognize who I'm speaking to when I get there. Mm -hmm. The secret of DNS is it's like HTTP. You know, this, in, HTTP was designed for flat web pages that lived on a file system. You ask for the file, you get the file. And maybe every once in a while you hit a CGI script. And that's not how we use the web anymore. The web is a totally different beast because we've realized we can be radically smarter, radically more intelligent, and you know what? It's our space. We can do whatever we want in our space. You know what I want to do? I want to publish encryption keys for my website, for my email server, for my IPsec endpoints. I want to stop buying products that work very well in the lab, that maybe, if I'm lucky, work very well inside my division or organization, but fall on their face.
space cross-organizationally yeah. because they don't use the only technology in the world that works well cross-organizationally. So DNSSEC is significant because finally, after all these years, we're going to have a good way to authenticate people in other companies. It is going to fix our off bugs. Wow. Yeah. And so essentially, you know, in, in the simplest form, right, DNSSEC will sign. So, so when you go request yahoo.com, google.com, it goes back to the authoritative server, wherever that may be. And when it returns the answer, it digitally signs that answer and goes back so that you know it's authentic. Exactly. So anything I need, any basic, think of DNS as the bootstrapping engine. It tells you what server to go to. It can also tell you what to expect. Who is this person? What are their keys? What is the configuration you're supposed to use? You know, what is the other server maybe you need to talk to? Right. It's not my place to tell you what to put into your DNS. It's your DNS. Sure. But right now, you have no way to securely publish this stuff. We keep pretending we do, and it's 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 a it's a buggy. It's a horse buggy. And and we need race cars, man. We need yeah. some race cars. <laughs> and so the the thing that I've been incredibly happy about has been when this all hit, um, all the guys who had been pushing DNS like would really been carrying the torch, Scott Rose in particular, um, Doug Mon from DHS also. Like, these are guys who've been suffering for years knowing cash poisoning would just take everything out. Right. Um, believe me, I was not the first to figure that one out. Probably wasn't the first to find this bug. I just wanted to be the last. <laughs> um, you know, there. My best I can tell. A lot of people like we told him, you should do this one thing that DNSSEC needs that comes from the political side of the universe, which is there is a root. There is a root that is at the heart of making DNS work, and it needs signatures too. Right. You cannot efficiently and scalably do DNSSEC without the root being signed. They kept trying. They spent a whole bunch of time and energy seeing if they could figure out a way. DNS needs its root. It needs it. It's just how it is. It's why it works. It's the magic sauce. And after I found out that the root was going to get signed, because of all of these guys who worked for 10 years, maybe a little bit of me, okay, this can happen. We are going to have a single root. We are going to have the ability to do this work. The market is going to start responding to this. Yeah. We are going to finally see, I got to be honest, a lot of DNSSEC tools out there, a lot of DNSSEC servers out there have been um, not the easiest to deploy. Sure. And because all of this has happened, now there can be return on investment. Now all these companies that have had all these products that haven't scaled, been scaling, they can say, wait, we can take this back. We have the new widget. It's like the fork was just invented and all we were using was spoons. <laughs> and I know the thing that helped me bash the spoon oh, man. <laughs> cereal. <laughs> yeah, cereal is great, but sometimes you want some steak, man. Yeah. Okay, Obviously. fair enough. You ever try to eat steak with a spoon? Doesn't want to eat. <laughs> Maybe it's fork. It's fork. <laughs> so what's been so great and so satisfying has been seeing uh, company after company coming on board and really doing the back-end work if they're a service provider and doing the product work, um, you know, like if they're F5, yeah. to make DNSSEC work not merely from a theoretical perspective, not even from just a specification perspective, but we have a real world with real networks that are really huge. Right. And we've had to do some strange things to make them work. And it is great seeing DNSSEC morphed into what the real world needs. See, the biggest conclusion from my research in DNSSEC, the thing that blew me away and flipped me around 180, is it's, yeah, present implementation is a crap. There's no arguing about that. No, it's true. Man, it's like JavaScript. Inside all this crap is actually a really nice system. And as soon as the forces are there to allow this system to be exposed, we're going to see that diamond come out. And that's what we're seeing. It's great. Cool. That's great stuff.